For those who are just tuning in, you are watching Arirang's special coverage of the South Korean president's state visit to the U.S., coming to you live from Washington. And for further discussion on today's Yoon Biden summit, let's turn back to Mr. Mark Tokola, vice president of the Korea Economic Institute of America, and our Oh Soyoung, our presidential office correspondent. So, Soyoung, let's talk about what to expect on North Korea front, because a Seoul's top office says a Washington declaration will be adopted, and today containing stronger extended deterrence measures. So, what's worth noticing would be the allies, uh, nuclear consultative groups. What can you tell us more? Well, first of all, as you said, uh, this Washington Declaration is going to basically uh, show how South Korea and the United States, go, they're going to be engaging in more uh, information sharing, nuclear sharing, uh, also planning and execution upon an attack by North Korea, obviously. And this uh, kind of document has uh, come about, it will come about rather, because uh, South Korea has, uh, for quite some months now, been very vocal about how it wants stronger reassurances mm -hmm. from the United States in terms of um, strengthening extended deterrence, which of course is America's policy of coming to its allies' defense under uh, nuclear and even conventional attack. And, Given North Korea's growing nuclear and we um, missile weapons capabilities that we've seen in recent months, uh, very disturbing if you look at their uh, growing asymmetrical capabilities that could, uh, which could well, as many fear, pretty much overwhelm the sort of ground-based defenses we have in South Korea. Uh, their hypersonic weapons, for instance, that could potentially escape detection. And in recent weeks, we've seen the testing of the uh, solid fuel intercontinental ballistic missile. So all of these threats have put uh, South Korean officials on edge, I suppose. And well, uh, around 80% of South Koreans apparently now believe that South Korea should have its own nuclear weapon. And given all these concerns, Mr. Yoon and Mr. Biden, they obviously want to put uh, their public's mind at rest, and they've come up with this uh, Washington Declaration that apparently has been in discussion for quite a couple of months now, according to uh, Mr. Kurt Campbell, coordinator for Indo-Pacific Affairs at the National Security Council. And um, he said that this does not mean, though, uh, the permanent forwarding of U.S. strategic assets, particularly not a nuclear weapon. He says uh, there will be strategic assets uh, deployed to the Korean Peninsula, but this will be regular visits to demonstrate the strength of the alliance and their readiness against North Korea's threats. Right. And Mark, on the economic front, um, some watchers in Korea say the U.S. Chips Act demand too sensitive data for chip makers for subsidies. And Korean car makers, including Hyundai and Kia, some big names there, have been left off the list for the uh, tax benefits under the IRA, the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act, as Washington tr tries to keep the China out of supply chain. So what do you make of that? Well, we know we have now eight months of experience with these two acts. They were passed in August of last year. Yeah. So I think it's become clear over time, as we've looked at their effects, mm -hmm. that Korea is going to do very well for both the CHIPS Act and the IRA Act. I mean, one Taiwanese market research firm, Trend Forward, mm -hmm. said that Samsung is going to benefit hugely from the CHIPS wow. Act. And on the IRA, um, it's not just the question of the cars being imported today. It's the future. So if the effect is to replace Chinese batteries and American cars with Korean batteries, that's a very good thing. And analysts estimate that the uh, Korean battery companies, uh, SK and LG, who work operate the states, are going to derive maybe $14.5 billion in tax benefits from the IRA. So I think we're seeing that uh, Korea is going to do very well from both acts. So it's investment for future. And, uh, Mark, speaking to the Korean press corps yesterday, U.S. National Security uh, Council Coordinator for Strategic Communication, John Kirby uh, mentioned ROK U.S. joint efforts uh, to uh, protect their key technology when asked about the recent report that said Washington has asked Seoul not to fill in the gaps at the shortage to market gap if China bans sales of microns, chips, memory chips. Do you expect, uh, do we expect from the two leaders today regarding this? Uh, I'm not sure we'll hear about Micron from them at the press conference or, or in, their, in their comments to press, but I think the issue is worth following. Mm. I think South Korea has very good reason to ask the United States about what's meant by this. I mean, as I understand it, Micron does not produce cutting-edge chips. They produce rather commodity chips. And the issue is not export control. The issue is China banning the imports of these Micron chips. So it's not an export control question. It's a question of how the U.S. and South Korea respond to economic coercion together. If that's what Micron's about, then this is a new policy instrument, and both sides should discuss how they would use that. 
All right. And so young Presidents Yoon and Biden have been emphasizing the alliance, becoming a global comprehensive strategic alliance. What does that mean and what outcomes are we expecting? Okay, well, we're expecting a very comprehensive outcome that's going to be presented in various formats of uh, documents or declarations, I believe. And, well, they're going to talk about a full spectrum of ways that South Korea and the United States can cooperate, from traditional security and trade issues to all sorts of things like AI, bio, um, space, uh, tech even. And, well, if we compare the summit to the uh, previous, uh, well, former President Lee myung Bak's state visit, for instance, um, his summit with uh, then-incumbent uh, President Obama back then, they were focusing on building the economic relationship with their uh, free trade agreement. And if uh, this time around, it's going to stretch beyond that. So beyond traditional security issues, then economic issues, now it's going to be what President Yoon has been calling a global comprehensive strategic alliance. Quite wordy uh, for me to remember. But um, this is basically cooperating in every critical area possible, from uh, securing supply chains and semiconductors, uh, biotech and other strategic areas that's going to be essential for the two countries to uh, build up their capabilities and for the uh, future of their economic security. Now that's the key word for both countries uh, this year round and they're going to also be talking about uh, cyber security as well as both countries join together to really tackle the various uh, new emerging threats on the uh, cyber front in the virtual space. Uh, so this could include an um, information warfare and also cyber crimes that we see by North Korea, of course. Um, so, well, this is no longer just going to be about the military alliance, as I said again, and also the just uh, simple trade volume relate kind of issues. But we're going to see, uh, yeah, a very, very comprehensive uh, kind of joint statement coming out today. Speaking of the Global Comprehensive Strategic Alliance, will there be any statements on, or measures on Ukraine, the global issues? Right, so that's quite interesting because in regards to uh, providing more aid to Ukraine, uh, there seems to be different kind of expectations by the two sides uh, in terms of how far the conversation will go. Because Seoul's top office uh, has been saying that it's not being prepared as an official agenda. They've been maintaining that position for a number of uh, days, weeks rather, but uh, the United States, the White House even said yesterday that uh, um, it will certainly be discussed, although they do respect individual countries' uh, sovereign decisions on how much aid that they're uh, providing to Ukraine or what kind of form, um, what form of aid they are uh, offering to Ukraine. So it does seem that um, Seoul is expecting a discussion. They haven't, um, you know, ruled it out. So uh, even if you look at uh, President Yoon's interview from last week, uh, he does say that there may be a time when Seoul will have to expand its mode of support if Russia commits, you know, atrocities or uh, severe damages to civilians. So. South Korea has made it very clear that they are going to take the very, uh, very uh, principled common sense step, as they said, if uh, the situation does spiral to that level, uh, to an unacceptable situation, um, to directly quote them. But uh, again, this is a hypothetical situation, and they've made it clear that they have been communicating with, uh, the, with uh, Washington about A to Ukraine. So. Whether there will be some kind of concrete uh, agreement on going forward or um, any kind of statement, we're going to have to wait and see. Some diplomacy here. And Mark, turning to you, uh, having met President Yoon Netflix, the CEO has uh, rolled out his plan to invest two and a half billion dollars in Korean TV series and shows. So what are the prospects uh, for cooperation in the culture sector between the two countries? Well, they're very important. I mean, we talk about semiconductors and batteries and autos, but the South Korean entertainment industry is huge and influential. It's a great example of soft power. So Netflix investment is, is one of the headline issues in this, from the summit. And it shows that uh, the Korean entertainment industry has been developing for decades. Netflix is not gambling. They know that it's a proven track record for Korea. So increasing the amount of Korean entertainment available to American audiences will strengthen ties between the two countries. All right. And Soyoung, before we let you go, on a rather lighter note, we heard this in our previous report, but do we know the... Uh, do we know what the White House has on its menu for the safe dinner? I heard unique cuisine will be served. 
Well, they certainly do have something special uh, cooking up for the two leaders and their uh, spouses this evening at their uh, state dinner. And, well, there's going to be some short, uh, short ribs, I believe, uh, uh, which I believe is quite an authentic American dish, yeah. am I right? <laughs> <laughs> right, and it will it obviously infuse some um, traditional Korean ingredients as well, like cabbages, which we like to put in um, our dishes and uh, use some uh, various spices. Sorry, I'm not a chef. I'm not very uh, eloquent in terms of these cuisine-related matters. But yes, there'll be ribs and also Maryland crab cakes, I believe. That's uh, which just sounds succulent and very delicious. And apparently, President Biden's favourite is going to be the dessert, and that's going to be um, a banana split uh, with that's some right. kind of lemon bar. Um, again, I'm not doing a very good job of making it sound you very appealing. Job, um, sorry to the chef, of course, but it sounds absolutely delicious. I think it would be my favourite too. There's going to be some ginger snaps and apparently a bit of tenjang, Korean uh, yeah. bean paste, um, yeah. soybean paste, right? So I don't know how that combination is going to go. I mean, what do you think, Mr. Tacola? Do you think it's I think the menu is fantastic. And for me, it's a metaphor of the entire visit because yeah. it's not Korean dishes and American uh, dishes side by side. It's fusion. Altogether. So it shows when you blend American yeah. and Korean content, exciting things happen. It's not just the cuisine, it has a meaning. That's All right. right. <laughs> Vice President Tacola and Suyong, our presidential office correspondent, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you.